Welcome back, everyone, to another edition of Combat Corner, where we talk about everything mixed martial arts, bare knuckle fighting, boxing, all combat sports. This is Rudy Rodriguez Shomont, and I'm going to jump right on in on today's topic, and that is UFC 308. It is official. Weigh-ins have taken place. We are ready. We all the um, championship fight has made weight. Ilya Topuria will defend his belt against Max Holloway. Remember, ladies and gentlemen, this card starts at 2 p.m. The main card starts at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. It is not the typical 10 p.m. start. They're fighting in Abu Dhabi. And so adjustments get made, and they are fighting at 2 o'clock in the afternoon, Eastern Standard Time. That means the prelim card on the East Coast starts at 10 a.m. And they don't have anything that lists any any early prelims. So, yeah, that's we have an early card, so you have your Saturday night to yourself for your Halloween parties and whatever else is going on. Let's jump on in on this on this on this card right here. But before we do, again, thank you to our subscribers and followers. We really appreciate your support. Please be sure to pound the like button, hit the bell, subscribe, and of course, if you haven't done so already, go on over to my other channel, Rudy's Rant, and subscribe there as well. Greatly appreciate you. Let's talk about this right now. Before we jump in on the actual card, let's talk about the weigh-in mess that happened today already. Kamzat Chemaev is the co-main event against Robert Whitaker. Robert Whitaker is on his last leg. And what I mean by that is if he loses this fight, he's never getting another chance. So he's a he's a win away from a title shot. So this is a massive fight for him. <clears throat> now, on top of that, this fight has already been canceled one time. Because Kamzat Chemaev always seems to have an issue in something. He doesn't take making weight seriously. He's missed weight before. He's blown weight before. There's always a problem with Kamzat Chemaev. And today in Abu Dhabi, where funny business happens in weigh-ins, what happened today? They extended the weigh-in window by an hour. What does that mean? It gives you more time to make weight. And then on top of that, when Kamzat Shemaya finally came in to make weight or to weigh in, he looked defeated in his face. He looked like a guy who wasn't going to make weight. You, you have that look, you know you're not going to hit it. And then the UFC with their little funny business makes the scale go quickly. You've already extended the weigh-in window for him. And he weighs in at 186. But similar to when Khabib Nurmagomedov fought in Abu Dhabi, the scale on ESPN gets put out of view. And when you weigh in, when the weigh, when, when they let go of it, it has to balance itself out. They do not let it balance itself out. It's going up, down, up. It's like it's it's what's going. It's doing this thing. You have to give it a second to get here. You can't just let it go boom boom or boom boom and then. Whoosh. Well, that's what they did again, and they did it for Kamza. Now he was still wearing his um underwear or boxers or whatever it is, so it, it's possible that he might have made weight had he gotten down behind a towel. But it's fishy. It's fishy. They've already extended for him. It's it's one of those things. If I'm Robert Whitaker, I'm probably I'm not very happy because number one, if he didn't make weight, I I get thirty percent, twenty to thirty percent of his paycheck, and I'm entitled to it. But it's the same thing with when it, when 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 um Khabib fought. He's on a towel, has his hands up, and he's like, and then. The skill goes, doo -doo, and you can see that Khabib, Khabib just did not make weight. He did not make weight. And this ha this always seems to happen in Abu Dhabi. It, it, it happens in Abu Dhabi. Um, Yeah, it, so it's, it's, it's some, there's some funny business with the scales. I get it. They, they have to, they have to, 
they do what they have to do. It's, the, it's their promotion. You do what you. That's that's why I think some cards end up in Abu Dhabi because you know there's going to be scale issues. Well, I don't even. I don't even remember. I don't remember the last time. When did Kamzat last fight? Kamzat's last fight was against Usman. Where was that fight card again? It was in Abu Dhabi. What was his fight before that? It was against. Uh, this is the well, that was in Vegas. That was where he was supposed to fight Nate Diaz and blew weight by eight pounds, and then fought Kevin Holland. And then prior to that, he fought Gilbert Burns, and that was in Jacksonville. At the end of the day, you know he didn't make weight. They 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 rigged the damn thing for him, but it is what it is. Let's jump on in on the card at hand. Main event, we have Ilya Teporia, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to run through the, 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 the main card first, and then I'm going to go through the uh, prelims and give my predictions. Please don't take my predictions as anything other than my predictions, and on some of them, you know, a lot of these guys are Russian fighters that you don't see all that much, uh, so at least you don't see all that much in, in cards in the U.S., some of these guys have never even fought in the UFC before, so it's a little bit hard to, to judge them. But let's start off with Ilya Teporia and Max Holloway. Teporia is the champion coming off of a big win over Alexander Volkanovsky. Max Holloway coming off that BMF Rock and Sock and Robot win over Justin Gaethje. That is what earned Max his final title shot. This is it for Max Holloway. If he loses... Unless he really, really just loves to fight, I don't see a point in continuing. Because I don't think he'll ever get another chance at this. Because the next fight for Toporia would be a rematch against Volkanovski if he was to win. And if Volkanovski was to win, there will then be a third fight between those two. But if Vol- and if Volkanovski was to win, he's already gotten he already has three wins over Max. So there won't be a fourth. I would love Max to win. I don't see it. Taporia is a sniper. He, he's running his mouth a whole lot, but he's a sniper. And I, I don't I don't see Max beating this dude. I just don't. You know, people will say Styles make fights. I just don't see it. Max is an underdog, so if you're if you're looking for a value bet, he could be a value bet. But if it, it, it will take Max being next level active to win this fight. I tell you what, the way Max looked versus Justin Gaethje, I mean, he was unbelievable in that fight. So again, I didn't think he had a chance to hell against Gaethje, which means who knows? He comes over the belt now. I think it'd be very, I think it'd be freaking hilarious if he won this fight and it just. It, it would mess with the division so much if he were if he if he were to win this fight. I mean, keep in mind, Max is not getting any younger. You know, Max. I mean, how old is Max Holloway now? Thirty four or so. He was like, he only, he's only thirty two. God, dog, this guy's been fighting since for, since like forever. We shall see. I like I like uh, I like Taporia. I'd like Max to win. But I'd like to pour. I like to pour in this fight decision. I don't think anyone knocks Max Holloway out. I just do not think anyone knocks Max Holloway out. Let me put that up on the screen. I apologize. <clears throat> we jump into uh, Whitaker comes up. Whitaker's underdog. I'll tell you right now. Whitaker is one of those guys that you can't sleep on. I. I it's interesting how people constantly overlook him. I don't know what the, the love affair is with Kamzat Chumayev. I know he was exciting early on, beating all these guys that weren't really all that good. And his win over Kamara Usman, to me, was not really a great win. You ha- you fight a guy on a, a week's notice who's clearly not in shape, flies across the world, and still... If that fight had gone five rounds, I think Kamar Usman would have won that fight. 
because he was there. It wasn't one of those dominating performances. Again, this is a man who, and on top of that, Usman typically fights at 170. So, uh, I like Robert Whitaker. I like Robert Whitaker by knockout. I like Whitaker by knockout. Um, you jump into the light heavyweight bout with this Magomed Ankalaev, the guy crying about Alex Pereira fight, fighting Alexander Rakic. Magomed Ankalaev is a pretty large favorite in this fight, minus 375. It's a good fight. Rakic is going to bring fire. I'll tell you right now. Don't sleep on Alexander Rakic. Don't. Now, has he been? Has he lost? I mean, the fight against Yuri, where he was pretty much in control, and then all of a sudden he's been gassed out, and uh, Yuri caught him. Ankalaev has got so much focus on out fighting Poetan, but I don't even know that Ankalaev has earned that earned that right to feel that way yet. He hasn't really beaten. Look, let's look at his fights. Johnny Walker, he had a draw. This was two years ago. This is going on two years ago, this fight. This fight should have been rematched. I watched this fight. This was this should have been a rematch. This is your fight that you're standing, standing, hanging your hat on? If he wins this fight over Rockage, I think now he has a legitimate claim to say that I deserve it. I've earned a title shot. But it ain't going to happen. I'm going to take Rockage via first round knockout. I'm going on a limb. I, if Rockage comes out blazing like he did versus, versus Yuri and Ankalaev is not diving for his ankles, I like this man via first round knockout. Moving into Lerone Murphy and Dan Ige. Uh, Dan Ige did a, the UFC a solid when he took on Diego Lopez on four hours' notice. So I guess his reward was to fight in Abu Dhabi. I thought he'd be on that Spear card, but <clears throat> I guess this is the next best thing for him in his opinion or whatever he wants. Lerone Murphy's undefeated. Lerone Murphy's undefeated in the UFC. He's 7 0 in the UFC. He's a big favorite. He came to him off of a big win over Edson Barbosa. I like Lerone Murphy by decision because Dan Ige is a tough SOB and he will fight to the end. But I think I, I like, and Lerone Murphy's last fight was a five round fight. I like Lerone Murphy by, de, by decision over Dan Ige. Sharon Magomedov against Arman Petrosian. This guy is another one that had a benefit of that scale, although he made weight without a problem. Unlike Kamzat, but he is uh, also undefeated, 14 and 0. You see his last win was over Michael Ovojajek. Trokalis is 3 and 0. I I think he wins this fight via decision over Armand Petrosian. Let's look into the prelims now. Prelims. We're not I'm not even trying here. Where's Carlos Leal? This is Carlos Leal's debut fight in the UFC. It's his debut, I believe. I saw. Yeah, it's a debut fight. You got twenty-two, one and one, and it's twenty-one and five. Give me a uh, Renat. Give me this guy. <laughs> By uh, yeah, he's a, he's a, give me him by decision. Then you jump into this fight. You got the Bruno, Bruno Silva. What's going on? So why is this scrolling? Ismail Ner Nerdiev and Bruno Silva. Now, Bruno Silva has got it. I mean, I don't even know how Bruno Silva is still in the UFC. He's 1-5 in, in his last six. Ismail Nardiev hasn't fought in five years in the UFC. And it's one of those fights where you're sitting here saying, a guy who hasn't beaten anybody in a minute, and a guy who hasn't fought anybody in a minute. And I don't know what Nardiev has done outside the UFC. Let me check real fast. He has fights outside the UFC, but he hasn't fought in the UFC in a minute. 28 years old. All these dudes from Chechnya, Russia, Dagestan, Kyrgyzstan, all these different places. Okay, now that I'm okay, now that I'm looking at his last fight with Sean Brady, he lost to Sean Brady. He is four and three outside the UFC fighting mostly in Brave Championship fighting. You know what? Give me uh, Bruno Silva. Give me Bruno Silva. By decision. Running into this fight with Farid Basharat. He's undefeated versus Victor Hugo. 
Basharat is 12 and 0. Victor Hugo is 25 and 4. I will take Basharat. <clears throat> He's a pretty sizable favorite, so I'll trust Vegas on that one. You got Chris Barnett, Kennedy, Njuku. Njuku. I always pronounce this guy's name wrong. Sorry. All respect. I love watching Chris Barnett in his belly. He, 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 he's, he's like the everyday man, and I appreciate that. I like Chris Barnett. Um, I like Chris Barnett. He's a monster underdog. I like Chris Barnett. If you're going to make a bet for value, I would, I would bet on Chris Barnett. You know, Kennedy is coming off of a loss against o, OSP. I mean, like, dude, you lost to a guy who's washed. It, it's hard for me to get behind someone. I mean, God, he's he's lost his last two. He lost to Dustin Jacoby, and he's lost to um, it's Dustin Jacoby. Yeah, he lost to Dustin Jacoby. But this was that light. Did he fight him at light heavyweight? He lost to Dustin Jacoby, and he lost, and he got, and he lost to OSP. OSP is done, man. This was only seven months ago. Mm -mm. Barnett. He's coming off of a win over Chris Collier. I'm sorry, Jake, Jake Collier. Jake Collier. He's got. I mean, he's two and two in the UFC. I think he's a fun guy to watch. I like him to win this fight via decision. Abus Magomedov and Bruno Ferreira. This is a fight between a 12, 26 and 6 Abus and 12 and 1 Bruno Ferreira. Give me Bruno Ferreira in this fight via decision. We jump into Matus Rebecki and Mit Mitkibit <laughs> or Olap. They need to have pronunciations on these names. Mitkibit or or Orobai. It's from Kyrgyzstan. Um. Rebecca, nineteen and two, is coming off of a loss. He's three and one in the UFC. Or, or 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 Albi is thirteen one and one. There's a height difference. There's a reach difference. He's a he's a decent favorite. Rebecca lost his last fight to Diego Ferreira. You know he is three and one though in the UFC, nineteen and two overall. But I would like I like uh, or Albi. Via, uh, via decision. There's a lot of decisions now in the UFC. There's a lot, a lot too, and way too many, <laughs> way too many decisions. Jumping into Jeff Neal and RDA. RDA is a guy that you're sitting here saying, "God damn, what, this guy is still fighting. What is he fighting for? He's 39 years old, man. Like you don't have the money." To, to, to live. You haven't created other things outside of fighting. You're 39 years old. While Jeff Neal, like RDA is a guy who genuinely seems to love to fight, whereas Jeff Neal seems like it's just something that he does. Jeff Neal has all this skill, all this talent, and yet he doesn't seem to take it seriously. He's not, he's, he's coming off of, I mean, he was a contender. He seemed like he would be an up and coming, up and coming contender at some point. And I'm and I'm gonna pick against him because I just don't like the way I've seen him. I mean, the Machado Gary fight was embarrassing. He, he the Rockmanov fight, he didn't make weight, if I recall. You know, he did beat Luke. He did beat Ponzini, but then he loses to Neil Magny, loses to Stephen Wonderboy Thompson. I, I mean, he's inconsistent, man. I'm gonna take RDA. <clears throat> I'm going to take RDA via decision. And then uh, we got the head prelim, Ibo Aslan and Rafael Cerquedia. Ibo Aslan is 13-1. Cerquedia is 11-0. And, oh, and this is his Cerquedia's debut fight. I'll tell you what, these guys are built. I mean, these guys are shredded. <laughs> I don't, I'm going to be real. I don't know a whole lot about, I mean, naturally, Cerquedia's his first fight, so I don't know a whole lot about him. I'm not gonna sit here and bullshit around. I don't know. I don't know a whole lot about him. He's got eight wins by knockout, eight first round finishes. So clearly he is a big swinger. Um, and he's coming for he's coming for a KO. I apologize on that. Give me give me uh, 
Evil Aslan because he's got some experience in the UFC. That's it for my predictions on this card. Definitely check it out. I, I'm, I've been waiting to see Max in this fight. I would, like I said, I'd love to see Max win, but I just don't see it happening. I, I think uh, Tuporia is on fire right now, um, and he's very, very confident. And, hit, and Max Hollow, at the end of the day, it's hittable. Like, he, like you have to remember, Max is hittable. He doesn't. He's not a guy that dodges a lot of punches. He gets hit. So now, can he drag Ilya Tuporia into some deep water? You know, and, and again, it's about volume. If Max Holloway throws 500 punches, 500 strikes, now we're talking. If he's under that number, we'll see. If he's under 500, he loses the fight. If he's over 500, he has a shot. I just think that Tuporia is, is, is in sniper mode. He's in sniper mode. So... Let me know your thoughts. Let me know what you got to say. Weigh-in shenanigans. Kamzat Chemaev, once again. I do, not, I do not know why the UFC continues to stake its future on this guy. It's frustrating. There are so many guys that have earned the backing of the UFC that don't get it, while a guy who just yells, Kill everybody! I'm going to smash everybody! Who gives a fuck? You can't make weight. You don't take this shit seriously. It's frustrating for people. Like, it's hard to get behind you when you don't take it seriously. Get everybody. Get the fuck out. By the way, Gilbert Burns beat him. So, he didn't kill everybody. That's all I got. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Be sure to like, like, subscribe, and follow. Ring that bell. This is Combat Corner. Come on now.